What's good, YouTube? Welcome back to another reaction. Today, we got more Salmonella Academy. We got pre industrial surgeries. Yeah, I feel like this is going to be a bit of a mad video, like surgeries before, like, you know, modern day equipment and stuff. So, uh, yeah, let's just straight into this one and uh, see what this is about, man. To be fair, a lot of these videos hey, are messed up. Bad day? Well, could be worse. You could be living in a world without modern anesthetic. Aye. Today, we're we'll talking about some surgical procedures carried out long before the development Bro, of medicine as we know it today. Now, once you go back a certain distance, the line between operation and mutilation oh. is pretty thin. So, for our purposes, surgery refers to any bodily <laughs> manipulation carried out with the intent of fixing some injury or illness. And away right, we okay. go. The very first. Oh, we're, what we're gonna see in here? We're gonna see like, oh my god, I've got like my hand is infected. Right, okay. Bam! Take it straight off. We have historical evidence for dates. <laughs> That's what's gonna happen. 6500 BC. It's called trepanning, which is a nice word for carving someone's freaking skull open using nothing but a rock. Maybe a rock on a stick if you were lucky. In all seriousness, though, you can see that a good deal of care went into the procedure, which lets us know that this isn't just the result of random injury. Many skulls even showed signs of healing around the holes, meaning plenty of the people who underwent this whole thing just got up and went about their day afterwards. All right, hold on, you say. Bro, this all what the fuck? Bitch. Uh, guano insane. No way this was that common of an occurrence. Well, friend, if you've been watching this channel Why? Long enough, you should know that if you give human beings the benefit of the doubt, chances are they'll prove you wrong. In fact, so far, over 1,500 Japan skulls have been dug up all across Wait, why are they- why are they doing it? Across the globe, from Europe to China and even the Americas. This means that between 5 and 10% of all skulls that we've found from the Neolithic period have had at least one man-made hole scraped into them. To what? put it this way, based on that data, there's a greater probability of someone born in the late Stone Age having their brain matter exposed by some shaman with a chunk of flint than someone born in the USA being a redhead. To this day, nobody really knows why this was such a common practice but most theories tend to revolve around the idea of releasing some kind of dark supernatural force from the patient. Man, I'm getting real Bro, sick of all the these fuck? evil entities infecting our minds and bodies. The thing is, like, the people that's getting these holes in their head, bro, by a stone, they've got no, nothing to, like, ease the pain or anything. They're just gonna have to sit. Huh. You can say that again. I tell you, I need these demons like I need That's a mental. hole in the head. That <laughs> no way. Fast forward to 600 BC. Over in India, there lived a guy called Maharshi Susruta. Now, this guy was a medical mastermind. He wrote a treatise known as Susruta Samhita, which described countless different conditions, treatments, and yes, even surgeries. One of which is the first recorded instance of rhinoplasty. Smart guy, that right? Means nose job. A hornbill's a type of bird. I'm here too. Anyway, now he gets a rhino horn, he shoves it. Sustruta. First, you get him plastered, obviously. Second, you use a leaf to measure out the part of the nose you want fixed. Then, you use the leaf to cut off a flap of skin from the cheek or forehead of the patient. This part's important, though. You gotta remember to leave a little piece of it still attached. Otherwise, you just got a chunk of dirty, dead face meat on your hands. Now, wherever you're looking to stick the new flesh on, you rub that part raw with a knife. Also, you're gonna want to stick two plant stalks in their nostrils so their nose keeps its proper shape. Slap the skin on, suture it, dust it with licorice powder for some reason, and cover it with cotton. Sesame oil should be regularly applied until the skin is fully healed. If you're like me, I already do that by default, so it shouldn't be an issue. Finally, at long last, your sniffer is reborn. Don't worry, you still fuck? look like a freak. Just slightly less so. Moving on, our next what surgery took fuck? place in 10th century Spain on Sancho I of Lima. What the fuck? Has he done, has he taken the skin off the head because the skin's going to regrow back and then... Bro, what is going so, on? Otherwise known as Sancho the Fat. Now, normally back in the day, having some meat on your bones was a sign of wealth and power and all that. But this guy was like TLC documentaries here, <laughs> to the point where he could hardly function as a human being. So his constituents okay. said, Greetings, your thickness. But we didn't uh, chop off yeah, the fat. You can't be king anymore on account of you keep breaking every horse we give you, and nobody wants to wash between your accordion like neck folds no more. After his adipose got him deposed, Sancho decided to seek medical help for his condition oh, under no. the oversight of well-reputed physician Hazdai Ibn Shahid, oh, no. which is an anagram for ha paintbrush aids. <laughs> now, if there's one thing that medieval man understood, it's practicality. Lap band, 
gastric bypass, belly balloon. These all exist to help people who don't have the self-control to stop eating so much on their own. But Dr. Right. Shapadu didn't believe in beating around the bush. He said, well, why don't we just stop the patient from shoving food into his own greasy maw in the first place and decided to just up and stitch the dude's lips together. Oh! After the operation, the only nutrients that Sancho received came through a straw in the form of a mixture known as thoriaca, which was a complex blend of several herbs, fruits, and seeds, including opium. It was basically the closest thing you could find to lean at the time, and lean he became, losing around half his weight before ascending to the throne once no, more. So the no shit, bro! You stitch this fucking butt! This is the part of the video where I pander to the desires of the audience. If there's one thing I know you internet people can't get enough of, it's things going inside people's eyeballs. Oh, no, Let's no, talk no, about no. cataracts. No, 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 the no, art no. of dealing with people's clouded lenses has been around for millennia, believe it or not. That Susruta guy from earlier actually talked about the most common like procedure eyeballs. for cataracts for most of civilized history, which is known as the couching method. Couching is done by taking a sharp object like a needle or a thorn and ever so gently stabbing their eye hole at uh, weird angles until the lens moves out of the uh, way. No lasers, no sedatives, uh, no paralytics, just a rusty old pin and some elbow grease the way God intended. The majority of the time, this operation didn't work, usually just damaging the already blind eye Oh my god. Shocker, right? And even if it did go as planned, you still, you know, didn't have a lens in your eye. So you essentially went from, I can't tell if I'm dead or not, to, ah yes, it is quite yellow out today. <laughs> By God, something moved somewhere. A slightly more refined <laughs> version of this operation is the suction method, which dates back to at least the 10th century AD, if not older. This procedure is described as Bro, requiring, what is quote, a large incision in the eye, a hollow needle, and an assistant with an extraordinary lung capacity. Though this reads like the setup to the world's most horrifying party trick, it's actually the bare minimum number of tools needed to completely extract the lens from the eye. In case you didn't pick uh, up on how, here's a diagram. This method generally uh, saw a greater success rate and fewer complications than its non-extracting counterpart. So hopefully you can sleep well tonight knowing I that can't the look at like shit to do with the eyeballs, bro. Somebody's living eyeball through a straw is above I zero. can't even touch Anywho, my own eyeball. Let's all just be thankful that we live in an era where procedures like these are a thing of the past. Bro, this is absolutely fucking crazy. Th like <laughs> bro, <laughs> Why on earth are people carving out the Oh, bro, that's mad. This, this this one kind of low-key makes sense a little bit, but it's stupid, right? And this one's just... You kind of get it, but it's fucking dumb as well. But what the actual We live in fuck? an era where procedures like these oh are a thing of the Oh my past. god. Now remember, kids, even though the surgeries I described here do sound pretty easy to pull off, please don't try them at home. <laughs> but if you do, please put it on live leak afterwards. Okay, nice. You know nice. what you can do yeah. at home. Yeah, One stuff about yeah, things. yeah, sick. But really good video. Enjoy that one. If you guys got any videos that you want me to check out, link them down below in the comment section. If you guys enjoyed, make sure you leave a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video.